62-13. Resolution 62-13 urges the legislature of the state of Hawaii to pass Senate Bill Number 456 relating to the transfer of the Mauna Kea State Recreation Area to the County of Hawaii. Urges the state legislature to pass Senate Bill Number 456 and approve the transfer of the Mauna Kea State Recreation Area from the state of Hawaii to the County of Hawaii in fee simple. Mauna Kea State Recreation Area is a 20.5 acre state park with picnic and lodging at the 6,000 foot elevation, which provides nearly hu nearby hunting opportunities of pigs, sheep, and birds. Introduced by Mr. Kanuha, waived GREDC. Thank you. Move to approve resolution 62-13. Second. Moved by Mr. Kanuha, second by Mr. Elagon. And is there a discussion? Yes. Mr. Kanuha. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I wanted to uh, propose this. I know the current administration is uh, supporting this the, this transfer of Mauna Kea State Park to the County of Hawaii. I personally agree with them on, on that part. Um, when you when we go up to this area, you always see that it's in disrepair. And personally, for myself, I thought that the county could do a way better job at and making it at least habitable, or we could actually use the bathrooms. I mean, I've heard so many complaints from residents going from Kona to Hilo, and they stop at these areas, and it just, they don't even want to go inside. So with this resolution, I think it would help, it would show that we, we are showing the state that we want them to actually take a look at this area. I mean, per, I mean, not want them to look at this area to transfer it, but I mean, showing them that this is a place that we do care about and that we need, we need at least, for right now, they're not doing anything about it. They're not appropriating any money. They're not planning anything to repair it or, or do anything. So um, I thought that it'd be a good idea to, for the county to take over these responsibilities. I know in the audience we have Mr. Hanma there, so if anybody else has any questions, uh, please let him know and he'll be able to answer them. So, I yield. Thank you, Ms. Ford. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Hanma, will you please come up to the testifier's table? Um, while Clayton is coming forward, um, I generally support this. Um, but I, and I stop there, unfortunately, I stop there frequently as I travel back and forth. And um, I think Drew was kind in his description. Don't go there without your MTP. Anyway, uh, Mr. Hama, if the, if the county were to take over this park, what plans would you have to renovate it to make it an attractive place for travelers to stop at or um, people to rent the, um, I don't know what you call them, the huts? But uh, yeah, the what? Cabins, thank you, cabins. How did I miss that word? So, Mr. Hama, what would the county like to do, and how much is it going to cost us? Um, Councilmember Ford, we'd still have to make the assessment on um, any CIP maintenance repairs there, but as far as, you know, doing the current um, services that the basic services people need, like taking care of the restroom facilities, um, making it a lot more sanitary, so, you know, it's... Uh, respectable to use um you know we can take care of those immediate needs right away i know we have cabins and the potential for the cabins you know there's income potential there and maintenance for the whole area you know could be included in a rfp to um have them concession out rentals of the cabins and um you know and even have a concession there to sell refreshments or what have you and while they're doing that, they can take care of the restroom facilities and what have you. Um, you also see only one trash can there. You know, we need to put a lot more trash cans there as well, too. And, you know, although I'm not answering your question, uh, like I said, we'd have to make that assessment on what the maintenance needs are first before we can uh, establish a budget and give you a number of, you know, a number of how much it's going to cost us to repair the facilities there. Okay, one of the concerns that I have is potable water. 
I mean, there are flush toilets in the restrooms, but is there potable water in that park for visitors to drink um, or use in the cabins? Not currently, I believe, but um, portable water is just for the toilet itself. I think we would have to bring water at least so they can at least wash their hands, you know, instead of just hand sanitizers. That at least I, I know. But again, you know, water is a concern and an issue. And I think that's the primary thing that we want to go ahead, go ahead and assess and address as we look, look into, um, you know, having this recreational area transferred to us. Again, it's again bringing the attention to the state. We did ask for it about three or four years back, and they did, um, they did deny transferring it to the county. And again, we're, um, you know, we're asking the same ask again. I think we have the support of our senators and representatives here. Um, but, you know, there's some opposition as well, too. So, you know, those concerns you do have, we got to address and um, make an assessment of. Um, thank you, Mr. Hanna. I suggest that if we get the park and we do this assessment, well, and we will be doing the assessment, um, that potable water should be at the top of the list. The area is terrifically dry. It's desiccated by winds blowing through there all the time. I've been there when the rain, and when it's raining, the rains don't hit the ground. It's horizontal rain. It does not even hit the ground. Um, and we may have to consider a well someplace up there in the mountains. I know that there's springs that feed the uh, military base. We might be able to get something. So um, a well alone is going to cost, and a reservoir, it's going to cost something between seven and eight million dollars, depending on how deep it runs. That's how much wells cost. So this is going to be a huge undertaking for us as a county. But um, I think we all recognize the state has failed completely and will continue to fail completely. So um, we need to do a better job. And of course, when the tourists complain about the bathrooms, they always think it's the county that's not doing the job. So thank you, I'll support it. Thank you, is there any other um, comments? Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Onishi. Thank you. Um, question to Mr. Homer. Have you both been in contact with DLNR about the transfer? Um, we have in the past. What about recently? Uh, not recently. I think, um, yeah, yeah, the administration has been in contact with DLNR. And, you know, they know of our interest. And I think even for, like, the Papuna facility, that would probably be done similarly in that fashion. I see. But as far as, you know, um, coming back to Brenda's question as well, too, um, we, we can ask, you know, like our senators and representatives to include uh, in their CIP support to fixing the facility. Uh, we have done so for um, Wyoming District Park, the first phase currently right now, getting some financial support from them, as well as I think the Honoka pool, where we've been asking for some financial support in partnership with the state. So. Uh, there's possibility of getting support that way as well. Because um, you know, when the when the um, mayors made their I guess um, presentation to WAM uh, at opening session, um, Senator Laura Thielen was really I guess against that, and she really wanted to keep Manukia and I guess Apuna under the LNR because of stating that it was like a revenue source for them which I, I didn't see how that was really a revenue source for them because of that large area and, you know, like how Hapuna is where they haven't even fixed those um, picnic areas from the flooding, I don't know, to like 2000, whenever, right? And so I don't understand, but have you folks got in contact with her too or no? Uh, Laura Thielen, who was the former DLNR Correct. director, is the senator now, and she's the... Uh, I guess the primary opponent on this bill. So we, we haven't talked directly to Laura Thielen, but you know, there's arguments for it against us getting the park. And like you said, uh, she uses the argument as that being a potential revenue source. But in, in the meantime, we've been waiting so long on so many decisions to be made. No care has been done to any of the facilities that you know, have continued to be neglected over the last three or four years. Um, 
maybe some attention has been paid because we, um, you know, we've made that argument about bringing it over three or four years ago. But you know, other than that, nothing significant has been done to it. And you know, the people of this island continue to be, you know, to to laugh to to, I, I guess to to be victims of not having that services, you know, properly um, out out there for them to use. So. You know, as you can see, you know, we're bringing this back up to their attention. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that would be great to get in contact with them and you know, get in that dialogue together. You know, the last thing is that um, was mentioned about water. I, I think that the state park, Monica State Park, is tapping water from Puakolo training facility. That's what I. That's what I. That's what I heard. I think before. Yeah, and so that's where they have their drinking water. But then also what I heard is that the military will be drilling, I don't know when, but I heard um, they have, I guess they got some funding, but to get, um, to drill for water up there. And hopefully if that happens and they do hit water, then maybe the state park or even the county, if we do have, get the park, we could, um, I guess, tie in something with them. But thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. So. Um, uh, this was um, one of the issues that um, Mayor Kanoi discussed a lot in his presentation to the legislature, state legislator, um, when he made his presentation. I think it was the way to me. And um, my sense is one uh, that a sense from the legislators that th that we're targeting those parks that where there is a potential income potential and they're looking at it as a potential income um, so uh, I, I found I found quite a bit of resistance not just through Laura Thielen but through our own big island legislators so I think um, it's important if this is important to us that we look to our local state legislators and I know mine aren't necessarily my uh, in favor of this or questioning it. Um, I also have, a, I'm going to ask, um, take a couple questions, but I also am concerned just in terms of our county parks. Uh, county parks, say, for example, in North Ohio, this is like critical issue for them, and the, the bathrooms are terrible. I mean, why, how do I know that we're going to have more toilet paper at Mauna Kea and we don't have it in? Our other county parks, or um, so I, you know, I don't fully understand. We want to take this on. Are we willing to take on that finances? And um, yet, I look around at the facilities that are existing parks, and if, if I, when I asked when I was campaigning, and I would ask tourists, well, what's most important to you? What what keeps you from wanting to be here? It was the facilities at our public parks um, was the number one answer I got. So I just don't, not sure how we as a county, we're not doing what we should be doing with our own and now we want to add. But I am going to support it, but I, I just want to bring that up. Um, I do think, um, I do agree with uh, Mr. Onishi in terms of um, tapping into the military. I think Right now, they're hauling all water. I think it's all coming from Waimea. It's not like they've got any water up there. They're bringing in, I forget how much, 7,000 water each and every day. They are talking about doing exploratory wells, which would be extremely expensive. But I think that now is probably the time to talk to them, whether it is the state or the, the county. Um, and I also think in terms of that park, we should be building up a relationship with them. There are plenty of of, uh, of people who are on the base sort of utilizing that and making it something special. And finally, I think we really ought to be looking into, if we do take it on, somewhat of a, how do we make it a neighborhood park? Um, different groups in North Pohala, out of exasperation with the county or the state, are sort of each adopting a park, and what do we do? And um, at the same time, they've come up with certain barriers. Um, Mahu Kona, for example, where they 
wanted to do a lot of work and repair all the facilities where all of the uh, the picnic sites were had been destroyed and they were told no, there's liability, we can't get into this. So I think we really need to work on how we work with the our neighborhoods and how we make this like something really special. I know when we were doing redistricting, it's now in Jay's um, district and maybe he should could expand that sense of community up there. It's now, the park would be in your district, I believe. Um, and just lastly, I want to say, I'm a little concerned in each of these when people talk about income potential, that some of these will transmute into privatization and other PLDCs, and suddenly we're selling it over to um, being run by some private company, and as with um, Adipuna, they're talking about locking it off locking the roads off on either end and making it where you need to pay to get in. So, um, I don't know, just Clayton, in terms of the one question for you is, you know, we're struggling to take care of the county parks we already have, and here the idea is to, to take on another rather than forcing the state to do a better job. Um. As for your question, you know, I think our guys are doing a pretty good job <coughs> taking care of parks. I mean, if you have constituents that have issues or concerns with a particular park, let us know. We'll definitely go and address them. Um, you look at our facilities and you walk in most of our parks personally yourself, I think you'll find it, you know, to be uh, of higher standards and quality than most places. I mean, our guys, I'd like to defend them. Pat Daly, I think, does a wonderful job with our parks maintenance crew and what we, with what we have in taking care of the faces in the facilities. We're not perfect, but you know, we will address whatever issues or concerns that are out there. And I think we can do a much better job in um, taking care of the restroom facilities, you know, of a couple of our, you know, most beautiful places on this island, which is Hapuna and Monarchia State Park. I think we can bring up those standards um, and as far as, you know, state support, I think, you know, when we went out to the meeting out in your, your community meeting, Malama Solomon was in favor and in support of the state park out there. But, you know, at this particular point, I think we can take on that, and we're doing a good job at our parks currently. And if we're not doing a good job in taking care of the toilet paper and freshening up the restroom facilities at our parks, um, we, we definitely like to address them and take care of those concerns with any of your constituents. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for on the point. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was just going to say um, that I understand, you know, with the maintenance that Ms. Willie made a comment about not taking care of own facilities. A lot of times when we acquire infrastructure, we need to look at um, supported and, you know, for me, I think Parks and Rec were cut before um, positions weren't filled. Um, I was aware of that in some of my communities. Um, so, you know, I'd like to stand up a little bit at least for um, the Parks and Rec people because, you know, they're trying to manage all of these facilities and infrastructure that, that um, is in, in a county um, with minimal um, staff. So, and um, with that said, that maybe if he goes in for more staff, then maybe you both for um, support him on the budget on increasing the staff. <laughs> Thank you, Clayton, though. Aloha. Thank you. Mr. Kamino. I just wanted to respond to one comment Ms. Willie made that um, certain legislators in the of district weren't um, supportive of this, or, I mean, there might be a few, but. Um, Senator Solomon and Senator Kaeli were the main introducers of this bill, so just an FYI. Thank you. I think we the discussion on Madam Clerk on Resolution 62-13. Ms. Ford, Mr. Ilaga, Aye. Mr. Kaneha, Aye. Mr. Kern, Mr. Onishi. Aye. Ms. Poindexter. Aye. Ms. Willie. Mr. Ishimoto. Aye. Chair Eof. Aye. Chair Eof. You have nine ayes. Thank you. Resolution 62 is adopted. Madam Chair. 
Maybe to the uh, Sustainable Council rules upon the five day hold over to get the legislature mm -hmm. ASAP. Second. Thank you. Move by Mr. Kamenov, second by Mr. Ford, um, to suspend our rules um, regarding the five day hold over. Um, Ms. Ford, Mr. Laga, Mr. Kamenov, Mr. Kern, Mr. Nishi. Aye. Ms. Poindexter. Aye. Ms. Willie. Mr. Ishimoto. Aye. Chair Eof. Hi. Chair Eof, you have nine ayes. Thank you. The motion carries. Um, council members, if there's no objection, um, Mr. Kikade has been waiting 